I journeyed back to the land where I grew up, home, Trinidad and Tobago, to find out more about the history of the Trinidad and Tobago Carnival. My quest for knowledge on this matter led me to an audience with the musician and music band leader, the legendary Dr. Roy Keep. I held a conversation with a veteran journalist, Errol Pilgrim. I had dialogue with a cultural activist and multimedia artist, Ruben Victor. They were kind enough to accommodate me. Through the years, carnival has been spread all over the world. Sweden and Finland and Denmark and Holland and these places, they are Trinidad types of carnival. The 300 Trinidad and Tobago style carnivals on the platform. The two largest street festivals in the Western world are Trinidad style carnivals, which are the height formula in the streets of London. They would $15 billion annually. We're talking about tens of millions of people participating in it actively every single year. There's a massive economies that are inside fortress economies. Metropolitan cities where you can't get in to sell a pen, a ballpoint pen. We have billion dollar economies, Caribbean economies, Trinidad and Tobago economies set up inside of these spaces. It's amazing phenomena. Where, where does it come from and, and how, how is this thing able to happen? Um, especially this is all happening without private and public sector intervention. There are no NGOs and there's no, there's no secret societies and stuff moving about and creating. This, this is the energy of Trinidad and Tobago. At work in the world, our uh, most successful entrepreneurial industrial enterprise. And most important uh, social revolution. The French colonists had come to Trinidad with all their culture and so on, and um, part of that culture was the holding of these lavish costume balls. You know, they they went overboard with the costumery, and the lavishness of it impressed itself upon the minds of those whom they had enslaved. The slaves were not allowed to participate in this fine part of their culture. So what they did, they mimicked their masters and mistresses, you know, dressed up themselves. Of course, most of them, or all of them, were barefooted. And they themselves made their own costumes and um, started their own thing, really. It was the West Africans who came here. It was the Nigerian. Ghanaian, that the Gold Coast, um, the seat of festival Africa, that's who came here. It was Bengal and Bihar from India who came here, seat of festival India again. It was France, and this was right after Louis XV, this is flam time, <laughs> you know, this is, this is them, it's them that we get, you know. But it was not until 1833 when emancipation came to Trinidad that the carnival really um, exploded into what was then called Canboulé which is a patois um, sort of definition of Canboulé or the burning of canes which was part of the the, the whole process of, of uh, refining the canes and processing them and so on. And Canboulé was really the, 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 the start of the carnival as we know it now. In fact, so much so that it is reenacted each year um, before the parade on Carnival, carnival Monday and Tuesday. There is two currents. The the Kambule tradition, the African Kambule tradition, what Mitchell calls the Mass, M-A-S, and then the Carnival Mardi Gras tradition of the Europeans. And at different times, different ones have been ascendancy. And right now, the Mardi Gras is definitely in ascendancy. Um, uh, and that's because of choices made by the elites, um, uh, post-independence elites of Trinidad. But this is a battle that has been ongoing since 
the 1800s um, since emancipation where all of a sudden the Europeans who were celebrating their Mardi Gras had to contend on emancipation day with a sudden, the sudden expression of freedom that the Africans chose was the carnival. Um, and all of a sudden there were literally dozens of sacred masquerade and satirical masquerade and all kinds of things taken to the streets which for people who would have banned the drama and have banned traditions and done all that kind of stuff and thought that they had these people under wraps, culturally rap, cultural wraps to see all this thing just take to the streets and all this other kinds of subversive energy there's a story that one of the first things that they did is that they went up to the savannah and they ran military drills yeah, Africans a whole mock parade with monarchs and bam and that kind of stuff which must have frightened Europeans no end is like where did this come from because <laughs> like you know how how did they organize you know how were they able to Serious moment, a very tragic moment too. The joke went that um, you had a situation where Despers is playing Noah's Ark with a lot of shepherds with long staffs and, and so on. And these shepherds were able to beat the modern day soldiers. But Noah's Ark was a sort of, well, it was more than just an ark because they had um, hundreds of cutlasses secreted in the arm for the purpose of any fight that they may get into. I remember there was a, 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 a very innocent and very um, well-decorated band brought on by one of the best um, wire benders in Trinidad at the, at the time, Cito Villasquez from Barataria. He was playing fruits and flowers, you know, and um, it was a, a sort of sailor band, the fancy sailors, with a lot of um, the, the headgear were well decorated pieces representing birds and flowers and other animals and so on. And Cito Velasquez's band, Fruits and Flowers, had found themselves at the top of Charlotte Street, right opposite Memorial Park, right between Despers and Sahol Stars. And the fruits and the flowers were smashed. The birds were smashed. And Sito's band was almost totally obliterated. But like I said, that was the last of the, 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 the era of, of seal band. Um, the violent rivalry by steel band and what happened is that uh, Eric Williams was, was successful in getting the bands to come together to talk about how they could cooperate with a view to developing the steel band under the, the, the aegis of the steel bands association and um, in 1963 what, what used to be some loose competitions that were held in one place or the other became formal and was called Panorama. So you had the seal band Panorama starting in 1963 and coincidentally this year 2013 was the 50th anniversary of the Panorama. push it onto the track. The track is a place where all classes meet, merge, whatever, and all those things. Then they push it onto the stage, then they jump down into the pit. But the steel band has developed into the kind of, 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 uh, of institution, and I would call it an institution, uh, because it is, to a large extent, um, because of the, the 
the devotion and the time that the adherents of the seed band take with their, their art and their instrument. You know, and seed band, seed bands are uh, community movements. Calypso was and still is um, in all its incarnations of an integral part of carnival. You know, the, the, the Calypso again was born out of the, the slavery, the period of slavery, when you had what was referred to as Shant Twelves, you know, people who would sing um, their protests rather than stand up in a soapbox. And, you know, because, you see, the, the, the slave master would always like to be entertained. And they always knew that, that coming from West Africa, these slaves were very, um, very artistic. They could sing, they could play things. Of course, they drew the line when it came to the drum because they thought this was talking to one another. We don't want that. We don't want you to have your religion, your drum, your, you know, that's all. your names, your family. But you could entertain us, you could sing for us, you know. And we would clap and applaud you and so on. So the chant 12 was born. And they would be singing in patwa, or they would be singing in, in, in a, a sort of a language that, that incorporated some of the African um, dialects with some of the French dialects and totally confused the slave master. They didn't know what they were singing about. You know, and this developed into the, the Calypso, um, which always was a means of um, attacking the master class that, 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 that developed into attacking the governments or attacking the, 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 the business classes, you know, because there was always the impression that there was one law for one set of people and another law for another set of people and so on. And the Calypsodian would be there representing the underclass, the, the people who could not speak for themselves. And you had a lot of, of, of very masterful works of Calypso coming out of that. You know, you had the spoilers and the sagalbas and the, the, you know, the roaring lions and, you know, the executors and they would sing, they were, their topics would be topics that could be taken up in editorials, you know, they, they would sing things that, um, that, 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 that people were reporting about in the rest of the world during the Second World War. You had um, Lord Executor singing about the, the arrival of the Graf Zeppelin, you know, um, one Sunday morning, I hear this, this this rumbling overhead, and it was a German Zeppelin, you know, that sort of thing. And um, it was always something to to listen to, you know, to tell the Calypsonian in the same way that the Calypsonian told a story, the masquerader told a story, you know. Only them that will separate us. Ah, what a day, what a time, what a story. To behold this world and its glory. Everybody cosmopolitan. We all will unite as one. Well. And then we got peace in the world. Where we need peace in the world. No more greed. Tell world leaders for me. To unite universally. Because we want peace in the world. For you and me, peace in the world. Everybody has a fun that you'll never see. Never done, but you know you're wrong. Mussolini, what you think at all? You want to make our king a broke at all. But you wouldn't live long enough to see Italian flags upon our country. For we would march forward and the bugle call fight to the end until the last man falls. At the bandit, but never done. Mussolini, you know you're wrong. Be at the bandit, but never done. Mussolini, you know you're wrong. Mussolini, that isn't bravery to have acted so advantageously. 
the way you started, I'm sure it made you shame. So if you win, you cannot say you make your name. And more than that, the last is a diplomat. So if you win, just walk the shore, I leave my heart. Advantage, you never done. Mussolini, you know you're wrong. He advantage, you never done. Mussolini, you know you're wrong. <laughs> The Abyssinian heroes all declare Mussolini, you better be aware Over the last year, you thought you would prevail You went to meet a fish, but bounced up a wheel And one would never shoot until you see him dead For we need to get brass out of his head Advantage, but never done Mussolini, you know you're wrong The advantage, but never done Mussolini, you know you're wrong Bye. 
The freedom um, erupted on the streets in unprecedented numbers and, 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 and colors and, and finery. You know. it, there was nothing like it. When you have the experience of playing mass, you really feel free. Trinidadians are very spiritual people. Trinidadians are very, uh, we have a rich culture, having come from diverse um, backgrounds and so on. And it is, it is reflected in the kind of music we have. It is reflected in the, the creativity, the ability to create the only um, percussion instrument of the 19th and 20th century. You know, the, the steel band, or the steel band. The fact that we, a little country, has been able to, to spawn carnivals in so many other parts of the world that mimic Trinidad Carnival, where Trinidad Carnival came out of mimicry, you know, it is, it is amazing. Trinidad and Tobago's history of its carnival comes from a rich and colorful background of many diverse peoples and their culture, with a very impressive growth in its development. The carnival duly tells many stories, performs choreography on the stage, and has many satire taking place during the carnival. Infused with its rhythmic music of the steel pan, drums, and more, it has developed from a celebration of freedom into the biggest street party in the Western Hemisphere to date. <laughs>